Hi, my name is Carl Reinholtz. I was born in New York. I live in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm an artist, local around here, a folk artist. Uh, I make my material out of materials that I find. Uh, I got my start as a child. My mother was a very important role in that. She was being an artist herself. Uh, she promoted the creativity in my family, but uh, it's pretty much it about me. I, it's, it's it in a nutshell. I'm basically, I wouldn't say that I'm the the epitome of a conservationist, though I do believe in it, and I don't. It just came from my upbringing, and you know, my father and mother group were children during the Great Depression, so they kept everything. So I learned this: you reuse everything and use it for any kind of, you know, anything you could, and. Some things you just can't use. You, you know, if a, if a blender's broken, a blender's broken and more so these days, it's not fixable, it's not even worth it. But if I can make some, to take the blades from it and the wires from it and turn it into a tree or, you know, a, a motorcycle or something and then put it back out there for the people to see, then so be it, you know. I, it's not going to waste. It's not in a landfill getting buried somewhere. You know, and I like to take them and make them transform it. Like, you have no idea if I think I've done my job as my art, my goal is, is, is when you look at it, you really just look at it, it's a motorcycle. You don't go, oh, it's a, you know, it's, he made it out of a dishwasher. So that, that really gets you, that's where I take it at this point. I try to hide where it came from. And if you figure it out, great, then I know you're really paying attention. But for the most part, that's what I do. But I, 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 it works a double edge for me though, though it's not as much, I mean, I, I didn't start this to conserve, it all worked out. I didn't start this either, I was, you know, I, I donate a lot of what I make to causes because it is a hobby and, and so I get a lot of good out of it. I get the satisfaction of making things, which is a selfish reason. You know, I make other people happy that makes me happy, which is still another selfish reason, but I can donate and help people to do art that can't maybe can't afford to do art and things like that. And every little bit I can help, you know, it, it does a, I think it's, it's, I'm doing my part. So I want to do this as a retirement. I'm probably, I'm going to do this the rest of my life. So why not give a benefit back to the community that I live? He's the, he's the one that hangs out here at my feet, getting paint sprayed on him and watching out for chips on the floor and the sparks and everything else and the flames and just hanging out as long as he gets his treats. He's just happy. So. You're a star now, buddy. <laughs>
Not because I did it, but because it's a lost art. I mean, if you go around the country and you look, copper is, people smithing copper or silver other than at a jewelry store is just few and far between and doing old school burn brazing and melding. These are lost arts that are going away that if a couple of people get it, it's great. You know, it can move the process along. And being a folk artist, you hope that it gets moved along, but sometimes it gets lost in translation and it doesn't and it can die. And that's the biggest worry I have that people will stop using their hands because it's hard, because it hurts. And you know, that creativity will be gone. It'll be all automated, mechanical. But, uh, and sports, why my big anvil's not here because I have a young guy that started and it's taking classes in the smithing and didn't have the tools to get started. So I gave him half a mind to get started until he can buy his own. So hopefully he won't lose interest because he's one of the few people that I know that truly enjoy doing it.